So today we are talking about the GVACSTAR accreditation program and we're visiting with Fran McFerrin, who's the president and CEO of the Hobby Center for the Performing Arts in Houston. So welcome to the program, Fran. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Your facility does look interesting. I did a tour online of it. Tell us a little bit about the Hobby Center. So we're a performing arts complex that's probably starting into its sort of 18th year. So by, you know, by standards with most of the touring Broadway houses out there, we're a pretty new building, right? We have two theaters. We have a 500 seat facility where we do most of our education and outreach programs. And then the main auditorium is 2,650 seats. We have two Broadway series in that auditorium, probably do about an average of 25 weeks of Broadway a year with two different series. The complex has administrative offices. One of our primary or our primary resident tenant, Theater Under the Stars, who produces one of the series, has a school here on the, on the, in the complex. Okay. And then we have a parking garage. So we're pretty self-contained. It's, it's a beautiful facility. Um, what do you have coming up? Anything scheduled? So we have a lot of things scheduled. We have postponed, canceled, or redated everything that was meant to happen this fall. Uh, largely, there's a, an event that Tuts is still on the fence about for December. However, you know, the, the touring Broadway industry, as you probably know, is shuttered right now. And the producers need uh, several months of a critical mass of 20 to 30 buildings such as ours before they can put the money into either relaunching a tour that's already existing that was shuttered in March or capitalizing a new tour. Yeah, a lot of work behind the scenes stuff that those of that go to the shows don't really know. Yeah. We have a lot of conversations on a daily basis about not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that's a little bit of a smart aleck comment. We have a lot of conversations about what we're going to do when we're allowed to reopen. So mm -hmm. there, but I think uh, we all agree we've never worked so hard to uh, really have so, so little to show for it at the moment, right? Well, there's a lot of prep work and getting ready to open and that's going to happen. But let's talk about the uh, accreditation program, the GBAC Star for Facilities. And why did you decide to go for that accreditation as a venue? So there's a couple of different reasons. So I was really interested in having a third party science based program that could accredit our efforts. And it was a real opportunity for us to take a look at our policies, practices, protocols in the cleaning and sanitation area dust those off, see where we could learn and improve from what you guys had to offer. Mm -hmm. And I think that when buildings come back online, I think that the ones that are going to be the most successful out of the gate are the ones that can demonstrate to clients, patrons, employees, that they've really taken the reopening program seriously. And so we really appreciate the opportunity that your program has given us to do that. Yeah, it's being embraced by so many and it is going to benefit them once they're able to, to use it and reopen. Now this might be a part of the first question, but what do you think the GBAC Star facility accreditation will mean for your staff and visitors? Well, I think the broad answer for both is increased confidence mm -hmm. and a level of comfort, right? I think that relative to the staff, I think I'm gonna speak about sort of two different levels. So we have the cleaning and the sanitation staff. And I think it's given them an opportunity to have more concrete guidelines to learn, to uh, uh, develop additional protocols as we just discussed. We have now definitive protocols if we have a confirmed exposure, right? Didn't have that before. And I think relative to the, the patrons, our guests, you know, I think everybody's becoming more educated, right? And I think that while we're 
you know, uh, on the short list of the people that have already been successfully through the GBAC star program, right? I think that it's going to be a good housekeeping seal of approval for the cleaning and sanitation sort of moving ahead. And, you know, while you might survey some of our patrons and subscribers today, they may not know what it is. You know, I dare say that sometime next spring, that's not going to be the case, right? And I think that as people move through the world and they see, you know, other world-class venues like ours that have been through the program and are able to talk about that, I think it's really going to help us. Yeah, they're going to know about it. And I've used that analogy, the seal of approval, good housekeeping. It's been tossed around a few times. Yeah. Because so people know what it means. Control. They know what it means. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. When I told my wife that analogy, she totally got it. She's like, oh, I would buy a product with that approval. So there people you go. visit a facility for the same reason. We think that you're right about that. Yeah. yeah. Good deal. Uh, here's my next question. Uh, about the challenges you face by getting through the process. What was maybe the most challenging part of it? So as I answer that question, I want to take just a second to give a big shout out to Kirk Goodman. And you've worked with Kirk in this process. He is our director of booking and special events. However, in this interim period, he's really picked up kind of all things mm -hmm. COVID. The, uh, yeah. The, the doctor who we're looking to for some medical guidance just this morning suggested he needs a better title. But at any rate, Kirk's the one that initiated the idea and is the one that really did the heavy lifting. I think what he would say is the biggest challenge was coordinating efforts with subcontractors, engineering staff, and other employees in an environment where the building shut down right now. You know, we have an operations and a maintenance staff that's keeping the, the place going. However, the rest of us aren't here and we're not entertaining guests. So I think that was a challenge. Um, however, you know, the, the easy part, I think, was the fact that we had so much of this in place. But I may be repeating myself, but you gave us an opportunity to really consolidate that and learn and fine tune what we already had going for us. Yeah, there have been other facilities I've spoken with, um, maybe not the type that you run, but who, who had a lot of things in place because they were top-notch organizations. So congratulations on going through an easier process because of what you had already done. That's always, yep. always nice. We have a great team. Thank you. Yeah, that's important. Uh, what is something that your, your venue has done differently and will continue to do moving forward because of the GBAC star accreditation? There's probably a few things. I think the thing that's most significant for me is the designation of one individual as a sanitation uh, charge person, engineer, for lack of a better way, so that all things sanitation flow up through the direct report of that one person. The knowledge base, the change in, in policies, procedures, that sort of thing. I think that's important. And then there's some other tools like, you know, the electrostatic sprayers that, frankly, we didn't use before, and I think a lot of other people are in the same boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, technology. I don't suppose Kirk's going to be the one who's that point person uh, for sanitation, huh? Uh, not on a day-to-day -day basis, but, you know, all kidding aside, I mean, you know, he's really involved in, in every bit of this. You yeah. know, he, he's, uh, he's really found a way to pull it all together for the organization. So my hat's off to him, and we're yeah. all really thankful for what he's done. Yeah, it's great to have someone uh, pick up the reins and run with that, so... All right, one last question. Uh, if a similar venue to yours asked you your opinion, should they go for the GBACSAR accreditation program, what would you tell them? I would say absolutely. It's completely worth it. You know, one of the reasons I think I mentioned, you know, before, I think it provides a level of confidence for guests and employees and that sort of thing. However, it really gives you an opportunity to evaluate what you're doing, to have some of your potential shortfalls brought to the forefront. Mm -hmm. You can take a look at those and then to improve and do better, you know? And I think that I believe this program is really a, a living, breathing thing. You know, you've got the list of the 20 protocols, which we were able to deliver on, which you evaluated, right? I got to believe that moving forward, that's going to be, 
evolving. And as organizations like ours look for an opportunity to renew, there'll be a recertification process. And I would hope that, you know, through the year, through your organization, on a real-time basis, we'll be privy to the latest and the greatest. Yeah, the um, program will evolve. It's not going to be static. It can't be. Once this pandemic's over, we're, not, we're hoping there won't be another one, but we don't know what the future brings. So you want to keep that confidence up for your visitors and your staff. So completely agree with that. Yeah. Well, Fran, appreciate your time today. And uh, hopefully one day you'll have uh, some, some famous actor on your stage once again, full of people wanting to see him. There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. Jeff, thanks so much for everything your organization has done for us. Really appreciate it. Man. All right. Talk to you later.